Well, hello there. I'm glad you could join us. What we're going to do today is we're going to build an electrochemical cell. An electrochemical cell is basically a battery. What we're going to do is we're going to make a potential difference creating some voltage. We have a voltmeter here to measure how much voltage is produced. Now let's talk a little bit about the electrochemical cell, what it's composed of and how it works. What we have here is a solution of zinc nitrate with a zinc electrode. We also have a solution of copper 2 nitrate with a copper electrode. We also have prepared a salt bridge with potassium nitrate. What we're going to do is we're going to build the electrochemical cell, connect it, and see how much voltage is produced. Now just before we do that, let's do a brief review of electrochemical cells. Let's find out which one of these is going to be the anode, which one is going to be the cathode, which way do electrons flow, why do we need a salt bridge. What we'll do is we'll connect it first. We'll get her going, but I'm not going to show you the voltage yet. Why do we need a salt bridge? Well, a couple reasons. First of all, we know from electricity that we need a circuit. We need a complete circuit for electrons to flow. If we hook up our electrodes and don't have the salt bridge, we won't have a complete circuit. Also, if we have electrons moving, negative ions are going towards one electrode positive ions towards another electrode, we're going to have a buildup of charge. What we want to do is we want to balance out those charges using the salt bridge. So let's connect it. Oh, well, wait a minute. I've got a positive and a negative. How do I know which to collect? Well, if you have your table of standard reduction potentials of half cells, you can open up it now and let's take a look at it. We have two reactions. We have a reduction and an oxidation. Now, if we find from all the species, we've got copper 2 plus, the nitrates. We've got copper solid, zinc solid, zinc 2 plus. Now, using our tables, we find that the copper 2 plus is reduced to copper solid. The zinc solid is oxidized to zinc 2 plus. Zinc is oxidized, copper is reduced. Knowing that information, what's happening? How do we hook it up? Well, we remember that. An ox cared. Where did that come from? It's just a little thing we do to remember. An ox, the anode, is where oxidation occurs. The cathode, care, is where reduction occurs. So now we know that oxidation occurs here, so we know that we have the anode. Reduction, we have the cathode. Well, that still doesn't solve our problem. Well, we know the anode and the cathode attract different ions. The cathode attracts cations, positive ions. Well, if this likes to attract positive ions, it must be negative. Therefore, we hook it up to the negative terminal. Now, don't worry. If we hook it up wrong, what will happen is we'll get a negative voltage, indicating to us that, hey, wait a minute, we've done it wrong. That's a nice little neat check. Now, we'll hook up the positive. Now, once we hook it up, I'm not going to show you the voltage yet because I'm going to ask you to figure it out in a moment. So I notice, oh, wait a minute. I think I've got my wires crossed because I see my dial went the wrong way. I probably got it plug, plugged in wrong. 
So let's just change that up. And one, two, there we go. We're showing that we have a certain amount of voltage produced. Awesome. Now, how do we calculate the potential difference? I've got a pad and paper here, and we're going to do that right now. Well, we've already established that the copper 2 plus is reduced to copper solid. That's the reduction reaction. On our table, we know that reaction occurs at a voltage of positive 0.34. So we write that down, 0.34. Now, because it's reduction, we keep the positive sign. The zinc, on the other hand, is oxidized. Well, when zinc is oxidized, you'll notice it goes from right to left on the table. Well, when that happens, we notice that the E naught or the voltage is negative 0.76. But because we've reversed the reaction, we have to change the sign, change it to a positive. Once we have our half potentials, we add them up, we get 1.10 volts. This electrochemical cell is producing 1.10 volts. That's awesome. What I'll do now is I'll do a little close-up of the voltmeter so we can see if we were correct. Now you'll notice that it shows a little bit less. Why? We calculated it that it should produce 1.10 volts. Let's remember, we do have resistance in our wires, resistance in the solution. So it's not going to be perfect. Remember, resistance resists the flow of electrons. We do see that voltage is produced. That's awesome. That's exactly how your battery works. What your batteries are is your different cells, your sulfuric acid battery that we normally use in a car, your alkaline battery, your lithium batteries, what they are is a number of half reactions all compacted into a small little container, what we call a battery. It produces voltage. Now eventually that voltage runs out. What happens when it runs out? Well, as both reactions, we've got oxidation, we've got reduction. As those reactions get closer to each other or reach an equilibrium, we notice the potential difference or the voltage also gets closer together. When they meet, guess what? The potential difference or the voltage, remember the potential difference is the difference in voltage of the half cells. Well, once they reach an equilibrium, the voltage becomes zero. There is no difference. And you know what? That's when you need a new battery. So that's just a little summary and demo of an electrochemical cell. I hope you enjoyed it.